August 9, 1993, on the shore of the Sanzania River in southern Siberia, Kayak has come upon a teenager with bloodied clothes sitting by the water. The teen was Valentina Udachenko, and she was the only survivor from her hiking group. The rest died mysteriously four days before. The story starts on August 2nd, 1993. Ludmila Korovina, a 41-year-old hiking and survival teacher, took a group of six students on a hiking trip through the Hamar Duban Mountains of southern Siberia. Ludmila was said to be very skilled and the best teacher by her students. The students were very excited for the trip. They had trained for months. The weather forecast looked good with clear skies and warm weather, and they had plenty of food and supplies packed. They were ready for their trip. The students that were joining her were 15-year-old Tamar Babinov, 16-year-old Victoria Zalazova, 17-year-old Valentina Udachenko, 19-year-old Denis Schwatzkin, 23-year-old Alexander Krissen, and 24-year-old Tatiana Filipenko. They began their trip in the town of Miranel and were planning on meeting Ludmila's 16-year-old daughter, Natalia, and her hiking group on August 5th in the middle of the hike. They would continue together to the town of Shlaidlanka. The hike started normally and they arrived a little early to the first peak. Soon after, the weather started to turn rainy and foggy. On the way up, they stopped to pick some golden root, a medicinal herb that grows in the area. On August 4th, they made it to Krutov Pass and started descending down the mountain in the afternoon. The weather became worse, bringing more rain. They stopped and made a fire and food at 4 p.m. They put up two tents in an open area on the hill. That night, the rain became heavier and it was getting cold. Around 4 a.m., the heavy wind snapped the ropes holding down the tents. They managed to fix them, but then at 6 a.m., the stakes were torn out of the ground, causing their sleeping bags to get wet. The next day, August 5th, it started snowing. At 10 a.m., Alexander came and told Ludmila they were wet and freezing. She instructed everyone to pack up, and the group continued down the hill. They were making good time, and it appeared they would still be able to meet up with Ludmila's daughter as planned. They had only gotten about 30 feet when Alexander, who was at the back, began to scream and fall. Ludmila ran to him and got him up. He began to bleed from his eyes, nose, and ears and was foaming at the mouth. Then he fell again. While desperately trying to revive Alexander, Ludmila told everyone to keep going, but not to go into the woods. She then quickly changed her mind and called them back to help her. Tatiana took out a tent and covered everyone with it. Valentina went over to Ludmila. She looked at Alexander. His eyes were open wide, and he had a blank expression. Ludmila said he didn't have a pulse. Not wanting to leave Alexander, she then asked Valentina to get Victoria to where the others were. While trying to help her, Victoria bit her. Valentina then dragged Victoria over to where the others were. Tatiana crawled over to some rocks and began hitting her head on them until she went limp. 
Valentina went over to Ludmila, who was now also bleeding from her eyes, nose, and ears. Ludmila then fell on top of Alexander. She had stopped breathing. Soon after, Victoria and Tamor began rolling on the ground, grabbing at their throats. Dennis told Valentina they should grab the necessities and run. She looked up after getting her sleeping bag out of her pack. Dennis fell to the ground and began tearing at his clothes. She grabbed his hand to help him, but he escaped her grip and ran. He didn't get far and soon collapsed like the others. Valentina looked around and saw no one was moving. Terrified, she ran down the hill into the forest. She then put more clothes on and hid under a boulder in her sleeping bag. During the night, she could hear trees falling around her in the forest. The next morning, she went over to where her friends were. Alexander and Ludmila were up near the top of the hill, and the rest were a few meters down the hill from them. They were all dead, so she closed their eyes out of respect. She took a compass and a map with her and started walking. For four days she walked, following power lines. She then made it to a river that she followed until she was completely exhausted and unable to walk any further. She was found by some Ukrainian kayakers. They gave her antibiotics and medicine to help her calm down. She managed to tell them some of what happened, and they told the police. Valentina would spend months in the hospital, but did eventually recover. It would be 20 years before she would talk about what happened. Even though authorities were notified, a team wasn't sent out to find the bodies for almost a month. A team was sent out on the 24th of August. It took two days for them to find the bodies using helicopters. When they found them, almost all of them were in thin jackets and three of them were barefoot. The bodies were swollen and their eyes were missing. Strangely, the bodies were mostly intact even though they had been out in the summer sun for almost a month. Also strange is there was little sign of scavengers. When autopsies were done, the official report says all had died of hypothermia, except for Ludmila, who died from a heart attack. They were all also found to have bruised lungs and protein deficiencies. The protein deficiencies were said to be due to malnourishment. Some people were blaming Ludmila, saying she was pushing them too hard and maybe not stopping enough for food and rest, causing the hikers' deaths. Valentina said in an interview with a reporter years later, they had been eating very well, four times a day, and snacks during rests. She said the calorie goal was at least 2,400 calories a day. Valentina said Ludmila was a wonderful teacher and in the end tried her best to save the group. Later on, after talking to the reporter, Valentina, Ludmila's daughter Natalia, and Yuri Golias, the leader of the search mission, were on a Russian TV show. On the show, they talked about possible causes for what happened. Ludmila's daughter, Natalia, said that she had been offered a large amount of money to stay quiet about what happened. She said after the event, she was brought to an office where she was told not to ask any questions or investigate what happened to her mother and the other hikers. She took the money and stayed quiet until the show. Her and her family were not allowed to see the body. Ludmila and the group were all buried in closed caskets. Not far from where the hikers were is Bala Air Force Base. Maybe they came in contact with something experimental they were working on at the base, exposing them to radiation or some kind of chemical. That would explain why Natalia was given money to keep quiet. Some people believe that the golden root herb that they had been picking may have been the cause. 
The backpack that belonged to Ludmila had quite a bit of golden root in it. The searchers thought she may be collecting it to sell in town. Golden root is used to help with stamina and to fight fatigue. Some think the hikers took too much of the plant making them sick, but Valentina said that they would only have small amounts with tea during meals. Shamans in the area believe the Hamar Duban Mountains are mystical and that there are forest spirits who will punish anyone who takes too much of the herb, so some believe the group was punished by these spirits. There are many accounts of tourists having strange sensations while hiking the mountains, sudden strong feelings of fear and anxiety, sometimes a deep sadness. Others report feeling strangely apathetic and not like themselves. Strange sounds have been reported, a low rumbling sound. and a high-pitched continuous creaking that seems to come from nowhere. Many describe a strange thick fog called Sticky Fog. A group of hikers that were out the same day as Ludmila's group described walking through a sticky fog. The mystery remains of what killed the six hikers, and how Valentina was able to escape alive, seemingly unaffected by whatever killed the others. If you liked this video, you also may enjoy The Zanetti Train Mystery or The Creepy Case of Emily Sage.